perfect. iOS 14 is here. Well, it'll actually be available in the fall. However, developers now have access to the beta version and I also have installed it on the 2020 iPhone SE. There's also going to be a public beta in July, so if you really want to try it out in beta, I would hold on and wait for July. Now I thought iOS 14 was going to be just an incremental upgrade with optimizations, but Apple surprised us all. The company has decided to finally add many of the features that Android users have been enjoying on their devices for years. They've included features like widgets and an app library that really makes it relate more to Android now. And honestly, that's okay. I'm going to show you the main features that really stand out in iOS 14. Keep note, I am running this like I said on the 2020 iPhone SE. Once iOS 14 releases in the fall, you'll be able to get it on devices like the iPhone 6S, which came out in 2015, as well as the original iPhone SE, and pretty much everything else that's newer, which I personally appreciate. I'm really glad that Apple has supported their devices for nearly half a decade. Now, before I do begin, I'd really appreciate it if you can give this video a thumbs up and turn on the bell notifications as it does help out the YouTube algorithm and pushes my content to more people. Anyway. Let's dive right in. Number one, widgets. The biggest change to iOS 14 is a revamped home screen, giving it more functionality. Widgets can now be added to the home screen. There only used to be support for widgets on the today view shelf to the left of the home screen, which was accessible by swiping over to it. Apple went ahead and created widgets for most of its own apps and even redesigned a lot of them for the release of iOS 14. On Android, Widgets come in different sizes, but on iOS 14, there's a small, medium, and large. Keep note that with iOS, you can stack them together to swipe between them as well. You can choose from a variety of widgets that can be customized to move around on the home screen. App icons automatically reposition themselves to make room for the widget. You won't be able to position the apps on the screen wherever you want like you can on Android, but that's Apple for you. Now, if you notice, I said something about stacking the widgets. iOS 14 has a new widget called Smart Stack. It's essentially a blank widget where you can place it on your home screen. This allows you to call up any widget to take its place. It's kind of like a widget gallery that you can quickly browse through at any time or set it to automatically change the widget for you based on your use patterns or the time of day. Number two, App Library. Apple has needed an app drawer since 2007. Oh wait, I meant to say app library. That's what Apple is calling it. Now, like all app drawers, I mean, excuse me, app library, the one on iOS 14 lists all the apps you have installed on your smartphone. On iOS 14, the app library automatically categorizes them into precise groups like gaming, entertainment, and social media. This is something that many Android launchers already have, but it's really cool to finally see Apple adding this to their software. The Pixel launcher by Google, as well as many other launchers from the Play Store on Android, suggest apps in its app drawer. Apple has also decided to add this to their quote-unquote app library. This pretty much shows apps you might need to use based on your activity, time, and location. The app drawer allows you to also hide apps from your main home screen. You can also just search up in the app if you really need to as well. I'm super glad that Apple has decided to finally add an app drawer. On Android, you're always able to customize a home screen and hide any apps you wanted to because you had an app drawer. Plus, it would just make it easier finding an app in the drawer. iOS would just throw all the apps on the home screen and you essentially had no way of completely hiding or organizing the apps to your liking. This is definitely a welcome feature. Yes, you can hide apps on the home screen on iOS 14 now. Number three, picture in picture mode. If you have an Android phone and used picture in picture before, you know just how convenient it truly is. It's awesome to see that Apple has finally decided to bring this feature to the iPhone in iOS 14. The great thing is that you can continue to use any app you want and let that video run as well in picture in picture mode. To make the video larger, just pinch the zoom and move it around. Just drag it around with your fingertip. 
If the video is getting in your way, you can swipe it off to the side where it docks there, leaving you a tab to pull on it whenever you want to use the video again. Even if you do that, the audio will still continue to play, which I personally appreciate. Now this currently works on Apple TV, Apple Podcasts, Safari, FaceTime, iTunes, Home, and any third-party app that supports this feature on the iPad. So I'm pretty sure once iOS 14 does come out in the fall, developers will also release their apps, their third-party apps, to work with picture-in-picture mode. As a YouTuber, I also spend a lot of time on YouTube, so I hope that Apple personally adds picture-in-picture support for YouTube on iOS 14. Number four, Siri. Siri in iOS 14 is getting a cleaner design that doesn't take up the entire screen every time you awaken it. When you ask for certain things in iOS 14, like launching an app or adding items to a list, Siri pops up in a small bubble at the bottom of the screen and performs the entire action without actually taking up the entire screen. The new Siri design in iOS 14 is only a part of the update. Apple's AI assistant is also getting very smart. During the WWDC presentation, Apple shared information that Siri is processing an average of 25 billion requests each month and showcased how the assistant will be more deeply integrated into the iOS 14 experience. For example, you can now ask Siri to send an audio message and the assistant will start recording your message instantly, while a small snippet will pop up at the top of the screen with recording controls. Leveraging the same voice recognition as Siri, the Apple keyboard now supports dictation. It runs on device and Apple says is a very secure way to do dictation when you don't feel like typing, even if your device is offline. Who created you? I think I first arrived as a burst of inspiration during a good long walk. My preferences are constantly changing, especially when you edit them in settings. Number five, translate. Apple's new Translate app is not just a translation tool that you can use to look up words in various languages, but also a tool for real-time translations of entire conversations, both on and offline. Using advanced on-device machine learning and a powerful neural engine, you can translate text and voice between any combinations of the 11 languages supported at launch. So English, Mandarin, Chinese, French, German, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Arabic, Portuguese, and Russian. More languages will probably follow suit as Apple continues to work on this. I can already tell that many people will be using this feature. And come on, think about it. This feature will genuinely help people. I hope you are doing well. Number 6. Messages iMessage in iOS 14 is getting an ample amount of notable improvements that allow you to more conveniently sort through messages and engage in conversations with friends and family. On the main iMessage screen, you can now pin your most important conversations so they don't get lost as you receive new messages. This way, pinned conversations will always appear at the top of the list. Memoji is getting many new customization features in iOS 14 so that you can really nail your look down. There's over 20 new hair and headwear styles, face coverings, aka masks, more age options, as well as new Memoji sticker options. Group chats in iMessage now have inline replies that allow you to directly reply to specific messages. Replies will get chained into their own threads that you can either view on their own or as a part of the general conversation. Mentions allow you to tag people in group conversations into a Slack-like manner, so you can easily ping friends and family. Number seven, app clips. Apple is introducing app clips to iOS 14, which are card size applications that are quick, easy to discover, and this part, which I personally think is unique, it doesn't require you to install a standalone app when using the app clip. Like I said, app clips are card style pieces that can be used by different apps to let you do things like scanning codes, buying items, or making payments online. For example, when scanning an NFC tag associated with a parking spot, an Apple Pay card style piece will appear on the screen. 
prompting you to pay for the spot without having to download anything on your phone or having to sign up. There are times when this happens and where we're trying to download the app and sign in or whatever and we just can't seem to find the app on our phone or it just takes forever to download. App clips can be easily found in your app library or launched from the web or various apps that support them. They can also be shared through iMessage or with the so-called app codes, which you can scan with the camera to launch specific app clips. This will allow many small businesses that may not have full-fledged apps to deliver their products more easily to users on iOS 14. I'm pretty sure smaller businesses are really going to appreciate and love this feature. And that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'll continue to keep you guys updated on iOS 14 and if I discover anything else within the software. I am super excited for iOS 14 to come out in the fall as well as the new iPhones. iPad OS 14 is something I really want to check out as well. Now, it is quite clear that Apple has been listening to their customers and fans as of late because these features were frequently asked for. We used to hear Android users say that they didn't like iOS because it lacked features like widgets, an app library, and picture-in-picture -picture support. iOS 14 changed that by bringing all of those features to the iPhone, so there shouldn't really be an issue for Android users, right? Wrong. Android users will now bring up the fact that Android has had those features for years and for them They still will not and they don't like iOS. Oh Well, at least Apple is listening Anyway, everybody, I hope you guys did enjoy this video If you did be sure to superman that like button comment down below because with the more interactions We get on this video not only helps the video and the channel but also pushes the video out to more viewers and best of all, Superman, that subscribe button. Until next time, everybody, and until next video, this is MTG.